Hi there! Welcome to the Legally Blind Geek YouTube channel. My name is Mike Tettleton. In today's video we're going to take a look at a couple of weeks ago I got a notification on my iMac that there was a software update available. And lo and behold when I went to find out what software was available it was the Big Sur Mac OS update. So I went ahead and downloaded, installed the 11.0.1 uh, version and in this video, we're going to take a look at how it impacted accessibility features, good, bad, and just a general overview. So if that's interesting to you, stick around. In today's video, we are going to share with you my impressions, first impressions rather, of the new latest and greatest Apple's Mac operating system update, which is the 11.0.1 at the time of this recording. And this is the Big Sur update. There's been a lot of talk about it. And there's a lot of, bit, a lot of changes, a lot of changes for the good, I believe. I went ahead and updated because so I want to show you how and what computer that I have here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. I'm going to go into the Apple icon. I'm going to go into about this Mac. And I'm going to show you that I'm running an old machine and that right now we're doing the Mac OS Big Sur 11.0.1 iMac Retina 5K 27 inch late 2015 version. Okay. And all the other stuff that goes along with that. We're going to go ahead and check for an update. And then it's checking for an update. It's going to tell us that your Mac is up to date. Mac OS Big Sur 11.0.1 is the latest and greatest version of the Big Sur software. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of that. And I'm going to close out of this. Then I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. And one of the first things that you notice is, you know, Apple has released some new images with this update as far as what you can use on your desktop and your screensaver. They've also made some changes in the dock down here where the icons look a bit different. They're looking a little bit more like you might expect to see on your iPhone or your iPad. You know, the Siri has changed a bit. You know, the Safari has now got the nice rounded corners with the little blue compass in the center of it. Mail is, you know, the little rounded off corners with the envelope inside. And then, you know, the different icons are looking a little bit different. But, you know, this is all good. I, I see nothing wrong with this. You know, the pages is now like a white background, rounded corners. It looks like maybe a fountain pen or some kind of pen with some quotation marks there, I believe it's, that's what that is. The music app is a red square and the music you know, notes there. So it's kind of easy to see how that would represent music. It just kind of makes sense. Your messages, well, that might be a little bit a head scratcher, you know, a green box with, you know, what is it, like a cartoon message circle or something like that in the middle of it. So, yeah, it gets the point across. But anyway, what we wanted to do and check out is how we set the desktop. We're going to take a look at that since there are so many different ones to choose from and with you know the latest and greatest shiny object apple has a tendency to add some pretty cool looking images so let's go ahead and go into system preferences from system preferences let's go ahead and select the uh, i'll zoom in here desktop and screensaver and from there we'll go ahead and we'll just go to desktop and you can see i've got the big sur selected and that's what I'm using for my desktop. Now if you go just to the right of that you're going to see the little grayed out box here. In the dark mode it's a black background, white letters in, in gray to kind of contrast where the drop down menus and stuff like that are. And then off to the right of that is the little blue box with the, with the arrows for up and down. I, sl I click on those and it gives us our three options. Dynamic, light, and dark. I'm going to leave it at dark for just a moment and what dynamic comes into play with is on these images over here, the ones that are marked as being dynamic, what happens with those is during the day, I'll go ahead and go to dynamic here, 
going to the day, what it supposedly does is if it's from left to right, right being the east in daylight, I'm assuming, because this looks like this might be the Pacific coast. So if that's the Pacific coast and the ocean, the water here, if that's the ocean, that's got to be on the west side of the continent. So anyway, when the sun comes up in the east over here, the sun hits the mountains from this direction, from right to left, and it creates these shadows in here. Now, as the sun goes from east to west and gets higher in the sky, the way the sun hits these peaks and valleys is going to change the way these shadows will look. You know, so you have your morning look, you have your midday look, and then when it gets over here towards the west, the sun's coming from this direction, the shadows and all that are going to shift, change, and make the image appear as though it is, you know, twilight or getting dark, middle of the afternoon, late afternoon, early evening. So that's what dynamic does. Now, with, if I went and switched to the light mode, it changes a little bit. If you notice now, it's like the sun is coming from straight down like it's on noon, like the shadows are a little bit differently. You know, the, the, the sun is hitting and the shadows look a little bit different. Subsequently, it stays that way all the time. So it doesn't, it's not dynamically changing from morning till evening. Sorry, I keep moving my cursor around a little bit, but hopefully you get the idea. So I, I like to use mine in dark mode. Just, it stays that way. The dark color gives me a pretty good contrast, and that's what works for me. You might like something else. As a matter of fact, let me invite you to go ahead and use the comment section down below, below the video here, and uh, just type one word in there. If you like the dynamic, type dynamic. If you like the light, type the light. You know, you like that consistency of that daytime shot. Or if you like the dark, you like the dark mode, just go ahead and type in dark. And while you're down there, you might as well go ahead and hit the uh, the like button or the dislike button if you don't like this portion of the video. And uh, go ahead and subscribe while you're at it. Hit that notification bell. And when the notification icon lights up or the drop down menu lights up, go ahead and uh, hit that uh, all button. Before we get too far along, let's go ahead and show the screensaver. Currently, I have images. I'm using my photos here. So it's on a, a loop. <laughs> so it just shifts from photos from my photos app. You might want to select something else. By all means, that's where you can do that here. Just hit your drop-down menu, pick out what, you, what you're what thinking you want to do. And once you change it, you can always change it back so you can kind of mix it up. So, so desktop, screensavers, all right here. From here, let's go ahead and back out of this. We'll go into accessibility. And then looking at the uh, overview with accessibility, it gives us in text form as to what Apple's promise is for accessibility. And accessibility features adapt your Mac to your individual needs, which is pretty cool. That means that uh, folks with low vision or completely dark blind or folks with other, you know, needs, you know, whether it be hearing or sight or whatnot, you can set up your Mac over here using all these different accessibility features that you can turn on, turn off, and set up the way you want to use them so that they work to fill your needs. Personally, I use the top two more than anything else. VoiceOver. Now, when I use VoiceOver, I use it a little bit differently than other folks do. Some folks will turn this on, enable VoiceOver, by just clicking this box. And then they can use the uh, Command F5 keys to toggle it on and toggle it off. Personally, I don't select that I, I because it gives me too much information. It has a tendency to start at the beginning of a text box or the beginning of a page or the background and it will read all of the options and you just have to be patient and let it get to where your needs exist and then make the proper selection when it gets there. For me, I would rather just uh, leave voiceover set up to where in Zoom, there's a couple settings in Zoom. 
use keyboard shortcuts to zoom, which you can toggle zoom, you can toggle zoom, which means you can turn it on and off using a keystroke. Subsequently, you can use keystrokes to zoom in and you can use the keystrokes to zoom out. If that's something that you'd like to do, by all means, play around with that. Personally, I find it easier for me to go ahead and use scroll gestures with modifier keys to zoom. And what that means is I use my trackpad with a gesture, two finger swipe up to zoom in, two finger swipe down to zoom out as I'm holding down my modifier key, which I have set to be the command key. If you want to switch that, you can click on the little down arrow and you can select control, option, or command. We've already talked about I like to use the command key, so we're going to leave it set there. And the way that works is I push and hold the command key, two finger swipe down, zooms out. Two finger swipe up, zooms in. It's, it's just that simple, easy peasy. Works for me. I like the way that works. You may differ. Please, again, use the comment section down below and let me know whether or not you like to use the keyboard shortcuts, hotkeys if they were, or if you would rather use the scroll gestures. I'd be interested to find out. Be, don't be shy now. Go ahead and click that. Or select the comment section and let me know what you think. And while you're at it, you might as well go ahead and hit the like button. Like it or dislike it. Again, if you like this feature, you don't like this feature, just let me know whether you like it or don't like it. Now, from here, we'll go ahead and I'm going to close out of this. And I'm going to show you one of the things that uh, makes this Big Sur update kind of cool and more iOS-like. They talk about that a lot. Is if you go take your cursor and go all the way to the top right hand corner of the screen, click on it, it brings up your widgets. So as you can see here, there are these little widgets here, just like you would see on your iPhone or your iPad. If you want to switch those around, you can do that. Just simply go into where it says edit widgets, click on that. It will give you a selection of widgets that are here. And I'm sure as developers discover a way or a need or what they want to do, There'll be improvements in this and additions to this, but from what I have right here right now, you can select small, medium, and large icons, and you can add and delete whatever you would like. Pick your different clocks, whatever you would like to do. There are a few that you can choose from here, and you just kind of scroll down through there, and you'll see all the different selections that you might want to add or delete. When we're done, we're just going to hit done. And then we'll go ahead and hit my escape key to get out of this. And that's all there is to the widgets. Now, the time clock and all that's still the same. Your Siri key, the Siri is still here. And you can use Siri to do all sorts of things. You just kind of click on that. Hey Siri, what's the weather like? It's currently cloudy and 41 degrees. So she will tell you what's going on there. And if you're not really careful when you say Siri, every device you've got in the house that heard you will light up. So try not to make that mistake. But anyway, as you can see, we're in Newburgh. It's 41 degrees here. And it's kind of like your weather channel thing here going on. So we'll go ahead and click out of that. And right now that's the only thing that uh, I use when I do the, the Siri control center. There's your control center, just like you would see on your iPhone or your iPad. And you can add or delete functions in this as well as you can on your phone. Then, you know, the spotlight search and all these other little buttons you can turn on, off, and whatnot. Wi-Fi, so on. These are all things that you can set up in the... Um, well, let's just go to that. Let's go back to System Preferences. Click on that. Open System Preferences. And then we are going to look for Menu Bar and Dock. Menu Bar. We can click on the Dock in the Menu Bar. And in here, you can set up what you want to see, how you want to see it, 
on your menu bar and your dock. If you want the size of your, you know, in the dock, if you want the size of the icons to be smaller and then magnify them to max, this is where you would set this. If you want the position of the dock to be on the left, you can. The bottom or the right, you can. And that moves where your dock would be situated. So if I go ahead and I put... Uh, let me get back in here so I can see what I'm doing. If I click on left, now the dock is on the left side of the screen over here. You may like that. You can put it on the right. So now it's over here. You may like it over here better. For me, I don't know. It just seems to work better for me if I put it on the bottom. So then it's, it's down here. Now, if you want to make that larger, you can slide this over and see how it makes them bigger. It's almost to the point where when you click over them, they don't zoom in or out so much anymore. I kind of like the minimalist thing until I zoom over them. So I'll just take that all the way back to where it's small. And as I move back down here again, as I slide over, the icons are going to get really big. So to me, that comes in pretty handy, especially when I've got something, a text box down here close to this that I'm trying to read. So if I'm down, right about in here, see where the line is? If I go below that, the icons will jump up and be in the way so that's where you set this up and you can go over here where it says dock and menu bar you can wi-fi you know you can do all these kind of things over here so that's where you would change the way and change the stuff that's on the menu bar minimize windows using yada 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 then your menu bar you can have the menu bar automatically hide and show the menu bar and basically all that does is if you tick that on now if we go up here and we look where the menu bar go it's not there you slide up over where the menu bar is supposed to be and there it comes so it disappears and it reappears if that's what you like by all means go ahead and do that I'd be interested again in the, you know, the comment section down below. Go ahead and just tell me what you think. If you like it where it disappears completely or not. I want to show you one of the things that I find kind of interesting or a head scratcher about this. And this happens to work or doesn't work when I am in one profile but not another. And basically what that is, I'm going to go to my messages, to my dear wife here, and I want to normally zoom in so that I can see this message box. So when I go to type a message, I can see what I'm typing. Now, the strange thing about this is it's going to lose focus. As soon as I start to type something in this message box, you're going to see that it's going to lose its focus. In other words, this message box is going to disappear. Huh. It's still there. It's just... It's lost focus. It's went from looking to here to down here. Why it does that, I have no idea. But it does. And like if I wanted to backspace that right now and just to get rid of that, it does it again. On the other hand, if I just use the dictation key, and for me, I'm using, I've got dictation set up, so I just double tap the function key. Hey, babe. It does that just fine until I hit the function key double time, you know, to stop dictation. So that's kind of interesting. Why it does that, I don't know. I have called Apple and was talking with one of the senior advisors about that. They assured me that they're working on that, trying to come up with a solution or figure out why it does that. Waiting to see. And if I zoom all the way out, I start typing. See, it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere i guess it doesn't have anywhere to go but the sad part about it is i can see barely that i am typing but i can't tell what the letters are so that's one of those things that maybe this is one of the reasons why you might want to wait until they get all the kind of bugs like this worked out of before you download it for me it's not that big a hassle 
Okay, that leaves us with the big question. Should you go ahead and update your Mac operating system to the Big Sur? I would say yes, for a number of reasons, but I'd be interested to find out what you think. So please, use the comment section down below to let us know what you think about Big Sur in this video. Additionally, thank you very much for spending your time with us. I hope it has been informative. I would really like to hear from you in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up or down button. Additionally, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get made aware of all the comments that we get, the answers that we provide, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Be safe. Catch you in the next one. Bye.